<laughs> okay, so H naught is the null hypothesis, right? And we always talk about mu. And we know always H naught is the equality sign, right? Mm -hmm. And then we know that on the other side, right side, we have a hypothesized value mu naught, right? Then we have alternative H A, which is still talking about mu, right? And it compares the mu with the same hypothesized value. Their hypothesized value here is 100. They want to check the average intelligence with 100. So now, for sure we know mu naught is 100. So for both of them, we replace this with 100. We don't know the sign for alternative. It says principal claims that the average intelligence is above above this hundred, means more than this hundred. And we are here to check his claim to see if we have enough evidence to support his claim or not. So here the sign would be greater than hundred because they said above. So let me write down here above. So he said the principal at the school claims that the student in his school are above average intelligence. And the average intelligence assumed to be 100. We are going to check it. So we, we state our hypothesis using mathematical notation in this form. Okay? Do you have any question about this? No? Okay. So now the next step is to find the Z test statistic which is x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over square root of n x bar is 112 mu naught is 100 sigma is 15 and square root of 30 so what we have 12 divided by what 12 divided by 2.7? 4. 4. 4. And then what is the result? 4.38. This is the test statistic. Correct? Yeah. Correct? Is that correct? So the next step is to find the p value. p value is the probability of, because the sign here is greater than sign, we have z greater than test statistic absolute value whenever we have not equal to right this one is the probability of a z greater than test statistic y because the sign of alternate so we choose the sign for p value uh, according to the alternative sign if the alternative had a less than sign this would be less than. If alternative has a greater than sign, this would be greater than. If alternative was not equal to, like the example we saw last time, we would say two times probability of z greater than absolute value of z, right? And then I continued, I converted this to one minus and changed the sign. But for this situation, this is the probability we want. And now I can change the sign to probability of z less than test statistic. So one minus the probability of z less than 4.38. If I want to show that, zero is here, 4.38 is here, and this is the area we want, okay? So this is the probability of Z greater than 4.38, right? 
Is that correct? And all the area on the left side is the probability of D less than. Right? So that's why. To find this question mark, we say we know that all distribution is 100% or 1. So 1 minus this area gives us this area. Right? 1 minus the left side gives us the area to the right side. Right? So what is this area? Almost 1. If you look at the table, you, you cannot find it, but you already should know when z is increasing to some number like this, the area is also increasing to almost 1, right? So we write down 1 minus almost 1 is equal to almost 0. Okay? So this is the p value. p value is really small, it becomes almost zero. And the next step is to compare the p value <coughs> with level of significance of bulk. They are saying alpha level of significance is 0 0.01. So p value is um, almost 0 or let's say 0. Okay. And then alpha is 0 0.01. So obviously p value is smaller than alpha. So we have p-value less than alpha. Now we make a conclusion. If p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. If we reject the null hypothesis, we accept the alternative. Still, I say accept, but we cannot use this term. We cannot say accept. That's not a kind of good word, word to use in a statistic. We are, I already explained to you. Okay. So we reject the null hypothesis. So we accept the, the alternative. So this is alternative, right? This was principal's claim. He said the student's IQ is above 100, right? And now we are saying we have enough evidence to support his claim because we said we are rejecting this one, but we are accepting this one, right? So, we have enough evidence to support principles Claim and his claim um, is average IQ is above Do you understand this? Tell me. Tell me what you think. Huh? 
Tell me. <laughs> sure. How many of you understood this? How many of how many of you want me to explain it again? How many want me to explain it again? I want myself to explain it again. <laughs> okay, it says the principal at a certain school claims that the student in his school are above average intelligence. The average intelligence is 100. Assume that the IQ score is normally distributed with a known standard deviation of 15. We wrote down, we have a sample size of 30, and in this sample size, the mean score of IQ is 112. We wrote down this. Is there sufficient evidence to support principal's claim? And now we know the principal's claim was the average IQ greater than 100, right? So this becomes our alternative why our null hypothesis is always the equality sign, right? The average IQ is equal to 100. And now we want to see if we have enough evidence to support either of these hypotheses. So we find the defense uh, statistic using this formula and it became 4.38. Then we know the p-value has a certain formula when alternative is greater than uh, mu naught. And that would be probability of z greater than z test statistic. So whatever the value we found from previous uh, part, we put it here. So this one, because this is a greater than, means this is the right side of z value. We always have to subtract the left side of z value from one to be able to find the area greater than, right? So this is the area greater than. So that's why I wrote down one minus probability of area less than, right? Less than z. So this one from table, even though we cannot find it, but still you know that if z increases, positive z increases, the area becomes one. So one minus almost one gave us the probability of zero for p-value. And now we use this probability, compare that with level of significant alpha, which is 0 0.01, and we understand that p-value is less than alpha. So if p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, and we accept the alternative. Our alternative was principal's claim. We are accepting this, means we have enough evidence to support his claim and say, yes, it seems his claim was Correct. So average IQ is greater than 100. Yes, we should not say, but I'm just using that to make sure you understand it. But, but you know why we cannot say accept, because in a statistic, we cannot be 100% sure. So look, if I write down, we reject this, and then here I write down, we cannot reject it. It's just this, I understood during this past three, four years, I understood my student get confused if I say reject, not reject. Uh, accept is so easier for you to understand. That's why I'm using that. But you already know we cannot use that term uh, in a kind of advanced statistic, okay? So the next question. The next question says, at a large hospital, the average number of new hospital acquired infection is 16.5 infection per week. It says, hospital staff decides to implement the new procedure to reduce, to reduce the number of hospital acquired infections. Four months after the new procedure were implemented, SRS of nine big found an average of 15.3 infection per week. So we have a simple random sample of size nine here. And for this sample size, the average of infection is 15.3, right? And then in other line it says the standard deviation is 2.1.
it says at all top of white person is there evidence that the new procedure reduces the rate of hospital acquired infection and this is the sentence we need to figure out what is the sign of alternative right so what would be the sign of alternative when they say they reduce less than exactly reduce decrease so all of them less than all of them are showing the less than sign so mu is equal to mu less than two right mm -hmm. and what is their hypothesized value exactly 16.5 so 16.5 will be the b naught okay we already stated our hypothesis known an alternative if you want to explain what alternative says what uh, null hypothesis says you can read it in this way null hypothesis says the average hospital acquired infection is equal to 16.5 here you will say alternative says average hospital acquired infection is less than 16.5 this is the way we read the alternative and null hypothesis okay z is equal to x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over square root of n. 15.3 minus 16.5 divided by 2.1 divided by square root of 9. So what we have? In numerator we have 12. <coughs> right yes and then what we have in denominator seven and then what is the one point seven one yes. so the p value here would be the probability of z what greater than or less than Less than why? Because. <laughs> because. <laughs> because. <laughs> because. Tell me, that's easy. No, alternative sign. Exactly, alternative has less than sign. Okay? So now you directly can find this from table A. So what is the probability? This is the p-value, right? What is the next step? Compared with alpha, right? P-value is 0 0.0436, alpha was 0 0.05. Okay, tell me. P-value. Less than? If you reject the no means accept the alternative means this one rejected this one accept. And then we will write down there is enough evidence that the rate of hospital acquired infection is D. 
decreasing, right? receiving all the credit, you know? So there is enough evidence that the rate of hospital acquire infection is reduced or decreasing. Right? Decreasing. <clears throat> Any question? Do you have any question? No? Sure? No question or you are just disappointed? <laughs> huh? No question? Oh. So the next question. So I said that after we solve these, I'm going to answer your question. So you can come here like office hours, okay? You can bring your question to me and I can answer your question after this. Okay, next question. Listen. It says, suppose a researcher interested in obtaining uh, an estimate of the average level of some enzyme in a certain human population take a sample of 10 individual okay sample sizes 10 determine the level of enzyme in each and in each in each and compute a sample mean of x bar equal to Suppose, um, further it's known that the variable of interest is approximately normal, normally distributed with a standard division 6.7, sigma is 6.7, 7.1. It says calculate a 99% level um, confidence interval. So level of confidence is 99%. So after finding the level of confidence, the star becomes known. So what is the star from table C? So it would be two points. Oh, two point five, five, seven, seven six. six. Right? And in exam also, I will give you three of them. 99%, 95%, and 90%. I'll give you this. So, three 
of them will be the most common one, and I will provide three of them for you, and the rest will be in table C. From table C, you can find it. <coughs> it says, calculate the 99% confidence interval for the population mean, and interpret that. Okay, 99% CI for mu is x bar plus and minus z star sigma over square top and x bar is 22 plus and minus 2.576 multiplies to 6.71 divided by a square root of 10 okay so 22 plus minus what we call this margin of error right so what is the margin of error what you found what number you found for margin of error you can solve this one <laughs> that's not a good excuse Five point four seven. Five point four seven. Correct. Check again. Check again. Two point five seven six multiplies to six point seven one. Divide by a square root of ten. That's correct. Okay. Five point. I got five point four six. Five point four seven. Oh, I just repeated it. Yeah. <laughs> we have enough evidence that we can round it up on four point five seven. Okay, so twenty two. Um, twenty two minus four point five seven. Twenty two plus four point five seven. So what you found? What is the lower bound? I think it's a five point four seven. Five point five seven. Five point four seven. That's why I always lose points <laughs> on exams. Why? I'm always like that. You're not careful. At all, yeah. <laughs> You're not careful. That is the sound size. Okay, so tell me. What is this now? 16.53. And then what is the upper bound? 27.47. So, I will develop an answer. This is the level of enzyme. Okay. So, interpret this. We are. 99% confident that the average level of enzyme falls between between 16.53 
Margin of error. What they are talking about? A point five. So they said how many individuals must be sampled if we want to estimate the mean level of enzyme within a margin of error of a point five. Calculate this. In parentheses. Or so the whole thing squared is up. <laughs> what is inside the parentheses? Two point zero three. Two point zero three. 2.03 inside the parenthesis. Yeah. Okay. And then after. Is this correct? So, what is the sample size? So it's correct, you know why? Because the margin of error was smaller at first and we had 10 as a sample size, right? Mm -hmm. Now, margin of error increased to 8.5, so we have a smaller sample, right? Yes. So this is correct. Any question? Sure. Oh, actually, it's 10.37. So, do you have any question about your assignment or anything? No? Okay, so I will be here until 10.45 if you have any question. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you on... Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday. 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 Wednes